boundary part of Saraswati. So something like that, and also the boundary part of Kali. Kali Hate Kali Ma, I Ali Hai Fatima. So Fatima is very important in that sense. So Kursun has committed a mistake by not inviting Fatima. So perfect, uh, ask for an explanation. Uh, so Kursun was so cost. Kursun said that she appears in public with a shabby rapper and her presence would have lowered my prestige before my refined armor guest. So that's why we did not invite her. And also I excluded Hassan and Hussein. So that's why you have antagonized uh, God because uh, Otherwise, he needs to need with anything divine, like Radha or something like that. So uh, then, uh, Kurchu, under the instruction of his father, invited Fatima. And we, have, we see that these five holy persons, Pak, Panjatan, five holy persons, uh, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, Ali, the son in law of the Prophet, As Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein, these five holy persons uh, together appear in that party. And that party was uh, truly uh, just, it was a success, great success and they were also accompanied by River Ganges. This is interesting. River Ganges. River Ganges was interested in the job of distributing water among the guests. And Fatima's son, who is Fatima's son? Fatima's son is mother, Shah mother. This is not, a, this is not a historical truth because mother in no way was the son of Fatima. But there is a combination of universal symbols of Islam, blending of universal symbols of Islam with the local symbols of Islam. Mother is the local symbol of Islam, the local P. P mother was also accompanying uh, Fatima to that party and it was a grand success. So th th there is simple as I mentioned, in Bamba is included here. Uh, P mother is also included here, which is a local P. So it is not a universal symbol of Islam. Uh, but at the same time, we, we, we see that uh, Kurchum is being asked to follow the five pillars of Islam as well. Number one. Number two, there was a clear uh, just uh, project to just uh, bring about a solidarity between the so called Bajraf and the Ashraf to ensure community solidarity among the Muslims. So, in the imagination of the Fatai, in the Fatai imagination of the poet, folk poet, uh, the representative of Bajraf. Fatima here is emerging victorious against uh, a rival, uh, Kulchu, who represented Ashraf Muslims in Bengal. So this is the thing. So this, uh, this, there is also an appropriation of the Hindu holy number. Five is also a holy number among the Hindus. Pancho Pandav and Durga also visits and uh, with uh, four companions. So five is a holy number. So there is an appropriation of this five holy number uh, by, by a Shia tradition, but it's spilled over to the Sunni as well. Because many of the Nawabs in uh, Murshida were the Persian migrants, they were Shias, but uh, uh, it spilled over to other uh, categories also, Sunnis and also the Hindus took part in Maharam. So this Pak Panjatan uh, gathered popularity among the non Shia elements as well. And also, uh, this is uh, in tune in conformity with another appropriation uh, of another holy number 5, Pach P. If you, in, in the Bengal context, if you carry out one, uh, <coughs> Journey on in the river and road, you have to take the name of five peaks. So, this five is very uh, significant in the Bengal context. And uh, uh, this is one, one thing. And the uh, uh, song, this is very interesting. Uh, for example, uh, this is not unique actually in the Eastern regions of Islam. Rain is regarded as Brahma or Marsi. So uh, 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 it also pleases to Islam. For example, the tension of Dharma Pundariko. Lord Buddha is projected as the merciful rain cloud in Chantarma Pundariko. So uh, the, if they are entertained, they are going to ensure sufficient rain for the secure harvest, a good harvest. So here, not only uh, do we notice that Prophet Muhammad is being just uh, worship at the um, as someone who can ensure a good harvest as the merciful rain cloud, uh, but also his beloved daughter uh, Fatima is also uh, there uh, being worshipped by the common people in the Bengal countryside. I will make Rani thank Dwizri Thalapani, Bibi Fatima Kojipani, Allah Dwi Dilipani. That is, uh, Fatima, Bibi Fatima is in search of water, and oh God, please give us water. Uh, this, is the, this is the theme for the song. So, 
Otherwise, also emerging as a very important, powerful, empowered uh, female deity in Muslim imagination. So, in the 18th century, when with the advent of colonial regime, when we see that many songs are uh, devoted to Kali, uh, like Rahmoshadi songs, provided some sort of self confidence to the Bengali Hindus. And the Muslims were not lagging behind, they were not slow to discover their own goddess Kali in the form of Fatima. So, Fatima. Kali uh, Hatai Kalima, Hai Ali Hai Fatima. Fatima is emerging as a very powerful female deity, or at least symbolized there. And the Jari song, this is interesting. The Jari song starts with uh, some poems devoted to the, this hierarchy is very much maintained in Jari song. First, poetry should be devoted to, the, uh, to Allah, then, poetry should be devoted to Prophet Muhammad, then, poetry should be devoted to Fatima to ensure the success of the performance. Uh, but recently, in the 20th century, we see uh, that Saraswati is no longer being impressed, uh, uh, Saraswati is no longer present. So, there is increasing emphasis on Fatima. This confirms the emerging or the uh, uh, vitality of scriptural fundamentals in the 20th century context. We do not see Fatima coexisting or existing alongside uh, uh, Fatima anymore. Saraswati is becoming absent in that sort of thing. Now, interestingly, Fatima is not an accomplished musician. At least we do not get any evidence that she was uh, an accomplished musician, but she is projected as an accomplished musician in the Jari song alongside Shoshuni, at least till the fag end of the 19th century. This was symbolism to a great extent, but we have to also notice that ultimately Shoshuni is disappeared from this sort of program uh, from 20th century on onwards. Now, uh, another interesting thing is that in the uh, let us now come, uh, come to the Bauer, Bauer songs. Uh, for example, uh, there are very, very few, uh, some few uh, Bauer singers who are very charismatic and very famous. You know, you might know the name of Laron Shah, Yudhu Shah, and others. Uh, for example, uh, they are composing songs in the name of Hayat ul Mursali. This is interesting. They are calling Prophet Muhammad Hayat ul Mursali. Uh, Hayat means Zindagi. Life uh, and Mursala is a, is a surah of Quran. Mursala is a those who are sent for the mankind, those who are sent for the mankind that is discussed in surah Mursala in the Quran. So, this uh, linguistically, the term is maintained by the powers as in Mursali, but they are projecting uh, putting emphasis on the prophet. But you have to distinguish the prophet as imagined by the powers and the historical prophet who was born in Mokka and died in Medina. For example, if you think about Kovir's Ram, Kovir is mentioning Ram, but this Ram is not the Ram of Ayutthaya, this Ram is the cosmic man. Uh, so, in the imagination of the Bowels, this prophet Muhammad is the cosmic man. He has no beginning and no end. He has a body but has no shadow, something like that. Uh, so, he cannot be compared with the historical prophet. So, Bowels are keen to be united with this uh, cosmic man. So, uh, he is the life of all the prophets. So, on the one hand, the powers are trying to function in conformity with scriptural Islam. They are borrowing words from the Quran. Why? Because at times, the waves of the fundamentalist movements like Wahhabi and Farisi movements became very strong. And then the powers had to adjust uh, with the changing circumstances. Then they started to put emphasis on the five pillars of Islam and also borrowed words from the Quran. But when this uh, wave receded, we will again uh, put lesser emphasis on the five pillars of Islam and this kind of Quranic terms. And even if they put emphasis on the Quranic terms at all, they would reinterpret it, refashion it according to their own situation. So, uh, if they are projecting the Prophet as the life of all the Prophets. So, on the one hand, there is an adjustment with scriptural Islam, on the other hand, you find how many spirituality here. So, if a Prophet is the life of all the Prophets, so he is not equal to other Prophets. This is very much important. You may ask me this question that from 16th or 17th century onwards, these sort of terms were being used like uh, Niron Jon, Brobu, uh, these sort of terms were being used by uh, Muslim poets who were like, who were decided to write in Bengali. Uh, interestingly, those who decided to write in Bengali, they were well versed in Persian and uh, Arabic. Then why did they decide to write in Bengali? Because they thought they are writing in the preface that I am committing a crime, I am committing a guna by deciding to write in Bengali, but I think ultimately on the day of judgment I will be forgiven uh, by Allah because I am trying to convey the message of Islam, I am trying to convey the message, the basic tenets of Islam to the masses who 
do not follow a relic and Persian. And so uh, this, that's why I am doing that. Ultimately, we shall be forgiven. So they are writing in Bengal and using terms, Tatsama Shabda or Sanskrit terms like Niran Yon or Prabhu. Uh, but this is not an example of syncretism as such. Actually, we can call it a search for the equivalence. Search for the equivalence. Because if you have used Arabic and Persian terms, they would not have been intelligible to the masses. So they are using such terms to uh, make it convenient to the common people so that the message of Islam or the basic tenets of Islam can be conveyed to the masses in a more convenient way. So this is one position. So this position taken by some scholars like Tony Stewart and others, including Richard Leader, they would say uh, that there was no and Mother also in the North Indian context. They would say there was no complete spirituality, not unalloyed syncretism. And I think my tour with the Francis Robinson will also gravitate towards more towards this sort of a position because Francis Robinson clearly explicitly uses the term I see that he has written a chapter and has uh, entitled the chapter as uh, living together separately. Mother Farlow Mother is uh, naming the chapter uh, assimilation from a distance. So there was assimilation in India between different communities, but from a distance. Living together separately. They were living together but maintained a distinct identity. It was not unalloyed, simply. It was not a total triumph for composite culture in India. So this is the position being taken from the 1980s by scholars like Richard Peter, Mother Farlow. Francis Robinson and also others, uh, Tony Stewart and others, uh, they represent different disciplines. For example, Tony Stewart is not a historian, uh, as you know. Uh, so, uh, multidisciplinary approach is very helpful. So, they uh, particularly Tony Stewart is more interested in this linguistic aspect of the discourse. So, that's why he's putting emphasis on this term, you know, new group and stuff. But I think it's very important, this is useful. So after finishing your uh, master's, you will be engaged in uh, research work, I'm sure. So, you uh, can understand the importance of this multidisciplinary approach to a problem. I think that helps. Uh, <coughs> so uh, this is this is the thing. Uh, even the Lalon, right? Lalon says that light. If you read carefully, Lalon, you will find that he is clearly mentioned that light will not burn again. What do you deduce from that? That light will not burn again. That is, uh, no mama will not burn again. That is. Uh, there is a belief that Prophet is the last of Prophet Muhammad is the last of the Prophets. He is the seal of the Prophets. After I think there will not be any other Prophet. So when Lalan is also gravitating towards that in a mystical manner, I think he is also just subscribing to that idea. So complete spirituality is there. Um, <coughs> that uh, light will not burn again. So this is one important aspect. And you can also read for your better understanding. I have compared Bengal and Indonesia with more important book in support of my hypothesis that multidisciplinary approach is helpful. If you read, it, read anthropologist Clifford Beers' work, uh, Development of Religion in Indonesia and Morocco, Islam Observed, colon, Development of Religion in Indonesia and Morocco, that will be helpful. You will uh, get an idea uh, about these sort of things. Now, again, uh, it brings us to the uh, environmental aspect once again that they never are strong. For example, in the Kitabong Bill Tracks, uh, till the end of the 19th century, you see dense forest areas. So, people uh, in the Bengal context, they used to fell timbers and uh, they just used to flow the timbers, timbers around, around the rivers to facilitate their movement from one region to another. So, uh, and to generate physical strength, they used to sing songs. Allah, Allah, Ayya, Zindagazi, Ayya, etc. Like a blending universal symbol of Islam with the local symbol of Islam. Zindagazi is the local symbol. Allah, Prophet Muhammad, they are the universal symbols of Islam, taking an adjustment so that they are spared by the custodians or by the representatives of Wahhabi Islam or Farah Islam partners. Uh, so, this is the thing. But in the 20th century, we see mechanization of this sort of uh, what? Deforestation. Uh, bulldozers are being used, brains are being used. These are sort of songs that are actually disappearing with this sort of ecogeographical change. We see that these sort of songs that disappear. <coughs> this is one aspect. Um, so I think I have taken enough time. So I should enable you to raise some questions. Uh, I just conclude by saying that. Uh, that I am reading a book on Shia Islam recently. Uh, 
there was not a single chapter on Bengal, but uh, uh, one of the largest Muslim communities in the world is already in undivided Bengal. And uh, these sort of songs, Shia migrants from Persia, they popularized this sort of culture uh, in Bengal. And even in that day, in the 1980s, there was not a single Shia family, but Mohammed was still living there. Why? If you ask me to in the introduction, I can explain it. It's a matter of self-assertion. Another form of community development, following Shia symbolism. So if you ask me this question, whether they are using Shia symbols, whether they were predominantly Shias, no, not at all. You will only find 10% Shias from the Indian Muslims. But Shia symbolism is very helpful. Why? If you go to the Lal Shabas Kalanda Shrine in Sin, you will find Lal Shabas, red is the symbol of blood, water blood, of the same. And you will find the eunuchs and others, marginalized areas, they are striking their head against the wall until they start bleeding uh, because they try to identify their plight with the plight of Hussein. Lalam Shah is also saying, I dare to divulge the mystical truth because my fate will be like the fate of Monsul Harlan who was persecuted for his religious belief. So this is the position. Uh, they have a hidden, they had a hidden agenda, this sort of thing. So uh, Shia symbolism is used to uh, represent uh, the minority status to represent persecution, to represent marginalization, to represent oppression, to represent sorrows and sufferings, etc. She has symbols in it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the majority of the uh, subscribers to this idea were she has as well. There are mainly Sunnis. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, for example, uh, the Shias were also ruthless in their persecution of the Sufis. Interesting thing is that Azulullah Khomeini utilized the Shia style of writing because he believed this sort of style, style of writing will create a good impact on the Iranian masses. So it used maintain the Shia style of writing, Sufi style of writing, but persecuted the Sufis from Iran. So not only the Sunni uh, fundamentalists, but Shias can be fundamentalists as well. Shias can persecute the uh, Sufis very much. So in the land of the origin, you will find this Sufi shrine is very, very fast. They are still going on in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, but they are being, from time to time, they are being bombarded. Now you can bombard me with some of your questions.